Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Continuing our study here in Romans. And uh, I think to, uh, this morning we'll start in verse 7 and read a few uh, down here. Romans 1, verse 7. Paul says here, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve in my, with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention, make mention of you always in my prayers. Now, um, I would just kind of, maybe I'll, I'll stop there, uh, because what I want to do this morning is just, just kind of go into this idea of prayer, okay? And um, we'll be in uh, Mat Matthew chapter 6, because I wanted to talk about the common prayer of uh, what, <laughs> what Pastor Sam would call churchianity. It's, it's the common prayer that many churches uh, recite. So let's go back there. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And this is what's commonly call, called the Lord's Prayer. Um, when I think of the Lord's Prayer, I think of the prayer in John chapter 17, which is his prayer for his disciples. And that's a really good prayer. I, I like to read that prayer a lot. <laughs> um, so Matthew chapter 6, and this is what I call the Our Father Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Um, vain re Unfortunately, that's what a lot of churches do. They just re recite this same prayer verbatim over and over again, not thinking really about what it means. Uh, chapter uh, 6, and let's go to uh, start here. Okay, so verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, So verse 8, our Father, which art in heaven. Now that's, that's a good way to start a prayer. That's how we, we could start a prayer, right? Our Father, which is in heaven. Um, go back to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31, 9. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is, this is, Israel knew God as their father. Um, back to Exodus, Exodus 4. Exodus 4, verse 22, says this, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, my, even my firstborn. Um, and there are other scriptures I could go into, um, but over and over you'll see that, you know, uh, Israel is referred to as, as, as God's son. God is, God is their father. Um, we just read in Romans, you know, um, Let's just go back there, Romans. Uh, 
Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just think about, I mean, so, um, look over at chapter 8 of Romans, chapter 8, verse 15, for a minute. Romans 8, 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Think about that. The Lord, the Lord Jesus, when in the garden, he, he, what did he cry? He cried, Abba, Father, right? We are able to be, to approach God, the Father, just like his, his son, the Lord Jesus does. And that's an amazing privilege, um, just to think about that. Um, and basically, if you read all the first verses of every epistle that Paul writes, he says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in every epistle. So... Keep your, keeping your bookmark here in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse number uh, 9. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Look at, uh, go back to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel 36. And uh, starting in verse 21. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I, will, will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols." will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. That, that's, that's God's purpose for that nation. That his name will be honored and, and, and hallowed among the nations. And that's going, to be, that's going to actually be fulfilled in the kingdom. Um, again, hallowed be thy name. That's a good thing for us to pray. Um, go to Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus 2, verse 10. Talking about servants here. Not purloining or stealing, but showing all good fidelity that they may, ad what, adorn the doctrine of God in, in our Savior in all things. Our lives are to adorn the doctrine of God. And what is that? That's, that's just hallowing his name um, in, in, in the world. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Look at this one. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10. Let's 
Starting verse 9, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, when He shall come to be glorified in His saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. What is that? That's, that's again, that's hallowing His name. Um, he is admired in them that, in them that believe. Um, Verse 12, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, how is he hallowed? By our, 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 our faith, our, our walk, um, our testimony. His name is glorified. So the next, the next we come to thy kingdom come. So their prayer and the, uh, God's purpose for that nation has always been a kingdom. It's right here. So this kingdom is, is what's been prophesied all throughout the Old Testament, the Gospels, into, into Acts. The, the focus is always on this coming kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. It's a literal, physical, visible, earthly, Davidic kingdom on the earth with the Lord Jesus Christ reigning on a throne in Jerusalem. Um, prophesied throughout the Old Testament. Just go, go for a minute back to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And this is the chapter, the, Daniel has this vision of this, this image. Um, and he goes through, you know, talks about what, what Nebuchadnezzar had this dream about this, this image. And um, he goes through the, and, and talks about the different kingdoms, physical kingdoms on the earth, starting with Babylon, then goes into Persia and Greece and Rome. And... Uh, And then the Antichrist kingdom. And then in, in chapter 2, verse 44. Talking about the last days here. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Notice it says, the God of heaven, sh um, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. Prophesied um, throughout the Old Testament, not just here, but in many, pla many places. It's, it's a common theme of the Old Testament. God's going to set up this physical kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. So, when we come to the Gospels, so now we come to the Gospels, it's not only just, it's not just prophesied here, it's actually preached as being at hand. This kingdom is actually ready to be set up. It's at hand. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3. Verse 2, verse 1, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the kingdom that the God of heaven is going to, be, is going to set up. Um, chapter 4, look at chapter 4, verse 17. Now it's the Lord Jesus from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Um, chapter 10. 
Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. It's interesting, so what are they doing? They're, 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 they're performing these miracles, they're, they're doing these healings. Um, go back to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah 33 and verse 24. This is talking about that future kingdom. It says this, And the inhabitants shall, say, shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. See, so what are these healings for? They're, they're, they're showing us, they're showing the nation here that the kingdom is at hand where the people will not say, I am sick. Um, so back to the New Testament back to the book of Luke chapter 9 just a few more verses here on this Luke chapter 9 then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, of God and to heal the sick uh, verse 6 and they departed and went through the towns preaching gospel and healing everywhere so they're showing here, here's this gospel this, this kingdom with the physical blessing of being, being signs of, of, of that people will be healed that they will not be sick uh, this is a foretaste of what's to come in that physical kingdom um, so in the Gospels this kingdom is being preached at hand that the, the Gospel of the Kingdom is this coming kingdom that, that has been prophesied throughout the Old Testament it's ready to be offered and it's actually offered now in the book of Acts go to Acts chapter 3 Acts chapter 3 And notice that the same, same things are, are, are going on here. So it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, for, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaped up, and he leaping up, stood and walked and, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he that sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power, our holiness, we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, and the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And this, in his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. 
And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as it did also you rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And that's that's kingdom, right here. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his pro holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers of prophets, shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things, or whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many of us have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant, which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, send him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So, here, here the, this, this kingdom is, is it's, it's being offered to the nation. Um, with the signs of the healings, um, continuing to confirm this is, this is the, the gospel of the kingdom being preached here. Um, Hold your hand here uh, in Acts and go back to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah 8 verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, it's talking about the, the kingdom, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This is, this is God's, God's always desired Gentile salvation. Amen. Um, and in prophecy, with the rise of Israel into their kingdom, the nations will be saved f through this nation um, by believing in the Lord Jesus as the, as the Messiah. Um, that's how God foretold that the Gentiles would be saved. That's well, we'll get into that later, but that's, that's different from how it is now, but we'll talk about that. Um, so back to, uh, back to Acts, look at uh, chapter 7. So in early Acts, this kingdom is being offered to the nation. God's channel of blessing to the nations. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Here's Stephen, about to be stoned here, speaking to the, the leaders of, of, of Israel. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them for which showed before of the coming of the Just One, of whom ye have been now been the betrayers and murderers, who received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. We've talked about this before. When, when, when he sees the Lord standing, that's a sign that the Lord is ready to come back in judgment. And the tribulation is about to start here. That's this time of wrath, the seventh, Daniel's 70th week. And then the Lord will be coming back in his second coming to reign and rule on the throne in the, in the millennial kingdom. So that's where we are here. Um, 
So, uh, let's see. And it said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the right hand of God. And they, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. It's interesting he said, Lord, laid not this into their charge. Because even, even in the midst of Israel's ultimate rebellion in rejecting God, rejecting um, now the, the Spirit of God, they, they hear they're blaspheming God, the Spirit of God, and they have no hope now at this point. Um, Stephen says, lay not this into their charge. Stephen, know that, Stephen knows that God is infinitely merciful. Um, and they laid, they, 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 the, those that stoned Stephen, they, they laid down their clothes at, at Saul or Paul's feet here. And that's also um, key because God is about to do something. He's supposed to be doing something now. He's supposed to return in wrath um, and destroy his enemies and, and set up the kingdom. But he doesn't do that. Uh, he interrupts this purpose with a new dispensation. This is the dispensation of grace. Look at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. And in verse 25, here's Paul talking here, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, Lest you be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Meaning, God is faithful to what he has promised. His calling, his purpose. He's still going to fulfill his purpose here with, with Israel and that nation here. But he's interrupted, he's postponed this to insert this new age of, of grace, this dispensation of the grace of God which Paul calls the mystery. Amen. So that's, that's where we are today. Um, but God is faithful. He will, he will fulfill his purpose once the fullness of the Gentiles are come in here in the body, the body of Christ. And only God knows when that will be. He will resume his purpose. In, so look at uh, uh, the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation here, chapter 11. Revelation eleven fifteen. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. It's going to happen. This kingdom is going to, is, is going to happen. All of this is going to take place. Um, Hebrews, back to Hebrews chapter 11 in one hand, and 1 Peter chapter 1 in the other. Hebrews 11, 1 Peter 1.
Hebrews 11, verse 16. It's talking about the saints here um, in Israel. But now they desire a better, what, country that is in heavenly, kind of sounds like a heavenly kingdom. Amen. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. If you remember in Revelation, God, at the end of the book of Revelation, God brings the, the new Jerusalem, this, this heavenly city, down to the earth. And that's what they're looking forward to. Uh, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 4. Start verse, uh, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance uncorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. It's, 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 it's reserved in heaven for them. Um, even though it's an earthly hope, but we'll, we'll look at this. So, um, look at uh, now. Look at Romans chapter fourteen. Romans fourteen seventeen. So we're talking about this kingdom of heaven, this this, this kingdom that God is, 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 has promised Israel. So notice not here what Paul says: for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Paul is talking about this kingdom too. Um. Look at, look at Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. Uh, verse 18, verse 18. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So Paul's talking about a kingdom, and it's not, it's not meat and drink. But, Paul, but the Lord here says, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. It's a little different. Now look at verse uh, 30. Down to verse 30. Um, verse 29. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me. That ye, may, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So while Paul's talking about this kingdom, we see there, there's some difference here about what this is. Um, it seems like Paul's, Paul's pointing out the fact that, that there's a difference between a physical manifestation of this kingdom and, and then what we enjoy at, in the kingdom of God. God. Um, let's see, look at, look at Rome, back, uh, back to Romans. Romans chapter 15. Verse 50. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 1 Corinthians 15, 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. 
So, Paul seems to be saying here that this kingdom that we're hoping for or looking for is not, is not a flesh and blood physical thing. So, so what does he mean by, by this? Um, look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy 4. Verse 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And, and, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So now Paul is talking about this heavenly kingdom. So a lot of people, here's where a lot of people do get kind of confused, you know. What, what is our hope? Are we, are we looking for this physical kingdom? Um, in a way, uh, but our ultimate destiny, where's our ultimate destiny? Um, I guess that's the question. So Paul's talking about this heavenly kingdom. Um, Let's see here. But it's 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 a little bit different than, than this this the physical earthly blessings that that Israel's looking for here. Um, but we'll talk about this. I'm going to go into this a bit later. So just just keep that thought in your mind. And let's kind of go on here. The next, next thing is um, in this prayer is, give us this day our daily bread. Why would, he, why would the Lord tell his disciples to pray, for, give us our daily bread? Lamentations, go back to Lamentations, it's the book right after Jeremiah here. Lamentations. Chapter 5. In verse 9, we get our bread with peril and with peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. So this is this, this is key. Keep this in, keep this idea in mind. What, what is the sword of the wilderness, and how do they get, get their bread with peril of, our, their, of their lives? Go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. <clears throat> Revelation 12, verse 6. Um, Starting in verse 5, and she brought forth a man child who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And who's that? That's, a, that's the Lord Jesus. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, that would be Israel, fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. That's the that's in here, that's in the, this time here. This is the tribulation period. Um, the Lord tells his disciples in that day when you see the the, the abomination of desolation, that's the antichrist set up. Um, they know that they need to flee into the wilderness. And they're they're going to be taken care of. Um, they're going to be fed there, just like they were fed with manna in the wilderness in the Old Testament. So there's a reason that the Lord wants them to pray. You know, give us this day our daily bread because they'll need Him to to feed them with their their bread from heaven. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what shall eat, what ye shall drink, what ye, for your body, what shall, ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment. Um, the Lord knows that they're going to need, um, they're, they're going to need to know that the Lord will take care of them in that day. Um, back to Revelation chapter 13. <coughs> Revelation 13, 15. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, um, that the image should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. They're going to they're need to receive this mark in order to buy and sell, to get food or whatever. So the faithful, the, those that, that, that believe will not take this mark, they're going to need God to take care of them that way, to feed them. Um, so give us this day our daily bread is that something we should pray well we we could but God has given us um, something he's given us instructions about our, our daily bread look at 2 uh, Thessalonians chapter 3 2 Thessalonians 3 and uh, verse number 10. For even when we were with you, we, this we commanded that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Um, in First Timothy, he says, if, if any, any provide not for his own house, he says he's worse than an infidel. He's given us actually a responsibility to take care of these things, you know, Amen. of getting our food. So, and then and the next uh, next thing is to pr they, that they, they pray is to deliver us from evil. What does he mean by that? Well, uh, go back to the Psalms. Go back to the Psalms and look at uh, Psalm 97. Psalm 97. And verse 10, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth he preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Look at uh, Psalm 140. Psalm 40, uh, verse 1, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Interesting, evil. He, he references the evil man here. Go back from back to Revelation, chapter three. Revelation chapter three and verse ten. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, 
I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. And this, this whole, the evil man, who, who is the evil man? That's the Antichrist. So they're to be delivered from the Antichrist. Um, look at Job. Back to the book of uh, Job. Chapter 5. Job 5, starting verse 8. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth, and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, that those that mourn may be exalted to safety. You, you, you keep reading things that, that they remind you, like, you know, um, they set up on high those that be low, and those that mourn are exalted. It kind of reminds you of, the, of what the Lord is teaching in the Sermon on the Mount about the coming kingdom and what it's going to be like. He disappointeth the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime. That's kind of reminds me of the, the, the plague of darkness in the tribulation. Uh, and grow up in the noonday as in the night. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise now the chastening of the Almighty. The chastening. We, we don't have time now, but back in Leviticus, you know, God talks about, you know, if, if you obey, I will bless you. If you disobey, I will curse you. And he talks about these courses of judgment or chastening that the nation is going to go through. And this fifth course of, of judgment is basically what we see here in the tribulation period. That's, that's still to come. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. That's foreshadowing the healing program in the kingdom. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven. There shall no evil touch thee. Seven. I, I just... No, no, no human being could have written this, this book. Even, even, if, even a thousand human beings could not have written this book Seven, how many years are in the tribulation period? Seven. seven. <laughs> Amen. This time of chastening is, is going to last for seven years. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. They're, they're going to face famine, and God's going to provide... Um, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it, it cometh. And it's coming. <laughs> At destruction and famine uh, thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Back in, back in those courses of judgment, God talks about, I think it's in the third course, that, that the beasts uh, were going to, you know, attack and, and kill and, and destroy. For thou, shalt be in league, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. And that just reminded me of, of something else the Lord said about stones, that the stones will cry out. <laughs> and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And that, there's other scriptures that talk about the king, the kingdom, you know, that the, the lion will lay down with the lamb, right? And um, 
the child should put his hand on a cockatrice then and, and they, they will not hurt or destroy you know my holy mountain and that's in that kingdom um, so yeah like it, it just uh, Amen. It, it just keeps going it does sound like Mm -hmm. And the fifth cycle judgment. Like yeah. All the other cycles are along with it, and they're mentioned. Mm -hmm. So this is the evil, the 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 evil that that the Lord that they will be delivered from. This this evil, the policy of the Antichrist against the nation of Israel. They will be delivered from. That's why he tells them, deliver us from evil. Um, that's not a bad thing for us to pray to. Um, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 10. The Lord uh, will deliver us from evil um, in a different way. So look at it, verse, starting in verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven. So we're waiting for his Son from heaven. But that's in the rapture. That's not over here. Amen. That's here when the Lord descends, it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, from heaven, and he, he, um, he, he, he takes his church up to be with him for, in, in the clouds. To wait for his Son from heaven, whom he hath raised from the dead, even Jesus, which, what? Delivered us from the wrath to come. And that makes sense, because we will be delivered. Israel will be delivered through, faithful Israel, will be delivered through this wrath. We are going to be delivered from it. We'll be taken out before, beforehand. Amen. Uh, you're in First Thessalonians, go to chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 9. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has not appointed us to um, this day of wrath that, that, that God has said is coming. Um, now go, go to the right, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy 4, verse 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So here's another, another side to this, being delivered from evil. Deliver, he will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. We saw that verse before. Um, back to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians 1, verse 3, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that we, he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God, God is, is he's, he will deliver us from this present evil world. How? Look at 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 3.
Verse 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Um, <clears throat> go, to, go to John. I, I, I kind of talked about the Lord's Prayer being the, the, the Lord's Prayer in, in John chapter 17. Look at, look at that chapter, John 17. Because this applies to us, I believe. John 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Then he says this, sanctify them through what? Thy truth. Thy word is truth. They are sanctified. They are delivered from e this, this, uh, this, this evil world also, as we are by the word of truth. Amen. It's the word of God that keeps us from evil today. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and, what, doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Um, down to verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the, in, unto the, what, the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. We are delivered from evil, evil work, evil doctrine. By how? By the Word of God. And finally, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> First Chronicles chapter 29. Go back to First Chronicles. First Chronicles 29, verse 10. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and art, thou art exalted as head above all. <coughs> for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And that's this, this kingdom on the earth that's coming, this, the millennial kingdom. that the Lord says that he will reign and rule over in Jerusalem with his 12 disciples sitting on actual physical thrones, judging the, each tribe of Israel. Um, how does this relate to us? I mean, it, it's, I, I believe it's, it's, it's good for us to also remember that God is the, for his is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Um, go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In verse 10. that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So now we're to, I'm going back now to, I was going to talk about how we have a kingdom. It's a little bit different. We've, we've seen a little, it's a little bit different. Um, it's talked about in a, in a different way for us. And notice it says, he will gather all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. So there's, there are two aspects of this kingdom. There's an earthly, that one, and then there's a heavenly. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, over to chapter 2, verse 6. Even you, verse 5, even when you were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Um, chapter 3, verse 15. Paul talks about this, this, this whole family in heaven and earth. So there's a family in heaven and there's a family in earth. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians. Three verse 20. Three verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Lord, for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says our conversation, our, our, our lifestyle um, is in heaven. And we, look for, and we look for him to come from heaven too. That's right here, right? Um, verse 21 who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself that issue of all things look at Colossians chapter 1 Colossians chapter 1 Colossians 1, verse 16, For by him were all things created. So he's, he's talking about all the, these all things again. That are what? In heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Thrones and dominions, powers, these are all um, words for government, government authority. Amen. And he's talking about these government authorities in, on earth, but also in heaven. So there are two realms, there are two governments, you might say, one's on earth and one's in heaven. Uh, Verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, um, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And this, this just confirms that the kingdom of God, we are part of a king, the kingdom of God too. It's just that our, our ultimate destiny, destiny is heaven. Israel, the nation's Israel's destiny, as the, all of the Old Testament and all the prophecies say, 
their, their hope is an earthly kingdom. Um, and, and in the ages to come, God is going to bring together both out here. Um, so they're not separate, they're, they're, they're one, but they're, they're different um, destinies or realms of government. They will reign and rule with Christ in the heavens as, as Israel will reign and rule with Christ on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, first Thessalonians over to the right first Thessalonians chapter 4 and we, we've heard this scripture before in verse 16 so this is our hope for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So where do we meet the Lord? In the air. Not on the earth. We meet him in the air. So that, and so shall we ever be with the Lord in the air. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, that's this, you know, thing, were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal, where? In the heavens. So, that's, that's, that's our destiny, that's our hope. So maybe let, let me close in, in, uh, in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's our, that's our hope and that's, that's our, our attitude. Our affections are, are on things above. They're not on earthly, physical things. They're on eternal, unseen things. Amen?